Five unsolved mysteries caught on camera by CCTV. Unsolved cases. Number five, Brian Schaefer. One of the most bizarre disappearances to date is that of Ohio State medical student, Brian Schaefer. On March 31st, 2006, he went out with some of his friends to celebrate the start of spring break. They met up at the Ugly Tuna Saluna, at the time an upstairs bar that resided on the Ohio State South Campus. Cameras show Brian arriving with his two friends coming up the escalator. They laugh and joke around as they enter the second story bar. Around 10 p.m., Brian called his longtime girlfriend, Alexis Wagner, with whom he had a spring break trip to Miami planned with in just a few days. He told her that he loved her and that he would see her soon. Alexis said nothing seemed unusual about the call. Later that night, Brian can be seen again on camera next to the escalators, talking to two women. He exchanges some pleasantries and then heads back into the bar. After this, Brian Schaefer was never seen again. Even stranger, the cameras that monitor the only exit of the Ugly Tuna Saluna bar never show Brian leaving. The only other exit was closed off to the public due to undergoing heavy construction at the time. Even if Brian used this exit, there are several cameras in and around the area, and none of them ever capture Brian leaving the bar. To this day, Brian has never been found, and there are still no traces or clues as to what may have happened to him. It was as if he disappeared into thin air. Number 4. Emma Filipoff The disappearance of Emma Filipoff has baffled many police and private investigators for years now. On November 20, 2012, Emma Filipoff was captured on CCTV at the Victoria British Columbia YMCA signing up for a membership. Her behavior was very unusual. Seeming paranoid and a bit worried, she's seen leaving and re-entering the building several times. Each time she looks out to the parking lot as if checking for someone that may be following her. On the morning of November 27th, Emma entered into a nearby 7-Eleven store, purchased a $200 prepaid card, and left. Later that night, Emma returned to the same 7-Eleven and purchased a prepaid cell phone, which are typically used by those who don't want to be traced and can easily be discarded after. This was particularly strange because Emma had never been known to own this type of cell phone in the past. As before, Emma still seems paranoid and worried. She can be seen continually checking outside as if she's being followed. From here, she took a taxi and asked to be taken to the Victoria International Airport, but had to end her trip early due to lack of funds to finish the ride, even though she did have her prepaid card with her. Just moments later, Emma was spotted by an acquaintance, Dennis Quay, Emma was walking barefoot in front of the Impress Hotel. So I walked up to her, I'm like, Emma, are you okay? Like, are you looking for someone? Is someone following you? Like, what's, what's happening? Still concerned for her safety, Dennis called the police and told them someone was in severe distress outside of the hotel. The police arrived and took her name. After speaking with her, they felt that she wasn't a threat to herself or anyone else and released her. This was the last time Emma Filipoff was ever seen again. Weeks later, a man was captured on CCTV walking into a local clothing shop in Vancouver. A missing poster of Emma Filipoff was ripped off the wall and was now crumpled up in his hand. Appearing very irritated and upset, he told the two shop owners that Emma was his girlfriend and that she was not missing. She just ran away because she had issues with her parents. When the man left, the shop owners immediately called the police, but they were never able to identify the man, and his identity still remains a mystery to this day. Number 3. Laura Lucas Laura Lucas went for a night out with her friends. Exhausted after dinner and drinks, not even making it to the bed, she fell into a deep sleep on her couch as soon as she got home, but she had no idea that she would have company soon thereafter. While Laura was fast asleep, a woman broke into her house, boldly walking throughout the house stealing various items from the home. One of the most intense moments caught on camera the woman can be seen walking back and forth past Laura as she remains fast asleep. The woman steals jewelry, cash, and a high-priced watch that Laura owned. Surprisingly, when she walks up to the side exit of the home, Laura's dog simply greets the woman and doesn't recognize her as a threat. The woman re-enters the house once again and steals Laura's car keys off the counter. She exits the home and steals Laura's car that's parked in the driveway on the side of the home. This entire incident happened in a guarded, gated community. Yet the woman was still able to enter the neighborhood unnoticed by the guards. Laura Lucas said she had no idea what happened until she checked her security system the following day and saw the entire frightening ordeal caught on her CCTV. Number 2. The Jameson Family One of the more strange disappearances was the story of the Jameson family from Eufaula, Oklahoma. 
This was mainly due to the bizarre circumstances the family found themselves in leading up to the disappearance. The Jamesons allegedly told their pastor, Gary Brandon, on separate occasions that they had seen spirits in the home. They claimed they had made contact with the dead family that was in the house, and their six-year-old, Madison, on several occasions spoke to the child of the ghost family. Mother and wife, Sherilyn Jameson, had previously purchased a satanic Bible as a joke, but her husband, Bobby, later confessed to his pastor that he actually read it. Fearing for his family's safety, Bobby asked his pastor if there were any special bullets he could use to rid his home of what he believed to be angry spirits. On October 8, 2009, the Jameson family started loading their truck and preparing to leave. The reason behind this and where they plan to go remains unknown. They can be seen systematically moving items from their house to their truck. Their unorthodox behavior almost makes it seem if they were in some sort of trance-like state during this process. They made several trips from the house to the truck, but aren't seen speaking to or acknowledging each other at all. After they finished loading their truck, the Jameson family pulled out of the driveway, and they were never seen alive again. Within a few days, the Jameson's truck was located on the side of the road. Inside the truck were their wallets, IDs, mobile phones, a GPS system, and $32,000 in cash. Also inside the truck was the Jameson's small dog who was severely malnourished by that time. Over the next eight months, a massive search effort was made to find the Jameson family, but nothing came of it. Various theories have been given, one of which was that the Satanic Bible influenced the family to get involved with some sort of cult, which might explain the trance-like state they seem to be in, but no evidence was ever found to support this theory. Four years later, on November of 2013, deer hunters came across skeletal remains that were discovered in the mountainous region of Red Oak in Latimer County in Oklahoma. This was less than three miles from where the Jameson's truck had been discovered four years earlier. Forensic testing identified that this was in fact the Jameson family, but the conditions of the bodies made it impossible to determine the cause of death. The bizarre events leading up to the disappearance and ultimately death of the family still remains a mystery. Number one, John Lang. John Lang was a Fresno, California resident and former Marine from the outside looking in to many, the story of John Lang seemed so outlandish, it sounded like a sad story of someone dealing with an extreme bout of paranoid schizophrenia. John claimed that the Fresno Police Department was stalking him. He said they targeted him after he posted several articles in the Fresno Bee, a local news resource, and accused the police department of illegally scanning the license plates of people who were in lower income areas, then pulling them over just a few blocks away. John claims it was all a ploy to increase ticket revenue at a very minimal expense. John Lang also made startling claims that the Fresno Police Department had broken into his house to set him up and had been closely monitoring him. To many, this sounded like someone who had become extremely delusional and in need of help. But this is where the story gets a little strange. Because of John Lang's suspicion that he was being tracked by the Fresno Police Department, he decided to set up a CCTV outside of his home that would record the activity on the street. This resulted in some very bizarre occurrences. John captured footage of unknown people parking near his home and walking around the front of his house as if they were staking out the place. Then they would just leave. There was also footage of strange people interacting with John and his neighbor's dogs behind the gate. John felt they were becoming familiar with the dogs so they could eventually come onto John's property uninterrupted. He also caught vans with government plates observing his home from their vehicle. Fearing for his safety, John filed an internal affairs complaint against the Fresno Police Department. That night, he was visited by three Fresno police officers who parked, got out of their cars, and just stood around directly across the street from his home. John believed this was an intimidation tactic to get him to cancel the complaint he had just filed. Throughout this entire process, John posted all of his video evidence to his YouTube channel, Lang Marine. Out of all the strange incidents that were recorded, the most disturbing evidence he captured to date was this video. A dark van full of people can be seen parked across the street from John's house. The van's side door slides open and reveals a man recording John's house with a complex camera setup. I don't know much about cameras, but at first glance it almost looks like a movie camera of some sort. But John believed this was a thermal imaging camera that was meant to capture his presence and movements in his home. If anyone looked outside their home and saw this, it would no doubt set off all kinds of alarms in your head. The many unbelievable claims John Lang made up to this point didn't seem so outlandish anymore. John posted a series of Facebook posts, letting people know that if anything happens to him, the Fresno Police Department would be to blame. After this, he posted another warning message. 
On January 16th, John said that, quote, the bad guys were coming after him tonight, and he asked if any registered gun owners wanted to stay the night at his house. Four days later, John Lang was found dead. He suffered multiple stab wounds and his house had been set on fire. Fresno police claimed that John committed suicide, even though he was stabbed in the back multiple times. They also claimed that John set his own house on fire. This information still didn't sit well with many of those who kept up with the case. There have even been some who have chose to investigate this case independently. YouTube channel Free Fresno went to John Lang's house and was stopped by local law enforcement who still seem to be closely monitoring the property. You guys cops? You guys, you guys, you guys law enforcement? Yeah, we are. Oh, name and badge number? Dodd. Two zero. Two zero. And you, sir? I don't answer any questions. Thank oh, you. Okay. What are you guys doing here? We're working. Oh, okay. Maybe someday the truth will come out, but as of now, it still remains unsolved to many of those who weren't able to make sense of the cloudy facts surrounding John Lang's passing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all soon.